and today we'll be doing a uh, markdown tutorial so you can follow along markdowntutorial.com and uh, the reason this is important is because for uh, my course you'll be using R markdown and just to give you an example this is a script in, uh, in R markdown and as the name suggests you have a mix of markdown and the things between the ticks are R code and so today I want to introduce you a little bit more about what markdown looks like and how it marks up a certain type of text and that's what we'll be doing today so let's return to markdown tutorial I'll put this on top and so you can follow along uh, I might be going a little bit too fast for you but just try and tag along so let's click ready let's get started so we'll start by learning two basic elements in Markdown, which are italics and bold. So basically Markdown helps us to format some texts and will make your reports look pretty. I'm getting our click here so it comes back on top. So we can use underscores and in this example I have to make the word not in italic. So I'll just do that. And it's told me to, uh, to move uh, ahead and now I get to practice bold. For bold we use two asterisk and so I will put will in bold here and it's taking me to the next one where we can combine both italics and bold and so in this case I have to put of course in italic and little moxie into bold let's see if I can get it right so we'll put of course in italic and we'll put a little moxie in bold and again it's allowed me to move forward so you can tag along so the final exercise we're going to make some uh, words bold and italic so we can use this type of, uh, of uh, setup so we can use both the asterisks and the underscores to make uh, words uh, bold and italic and so this is what we have to change this is unbelievable so let's see if we manage to do so and we've already completed our very first lesson so now you're able to make things italic and bold in markdown and that's important for your assignment because, for example, when you report p-values or you need to highlight some things, you will have to use uh, bold and italic. So it's a very easy way of marking up text. So let's move on to the next lesson. Just for the record, I won't be doing all the lessons. I'll be running through uh, up until paragraphs because most likely you won't be using paragraphs in your assignment. But you can practice on your own if you want to do all of them. So the next bit is about headers. So let's have a look at headers. So we can make headers in different sizes and we do that via using hashtags. So let's have a crack at making uh, the headers compliant. So we can basically put in the number of hashtags to match up the level header. And this is something where you will need for your assignment to structure it. So you'll need headers to sort of organize your, uh, your uh, assignment. So we can use, uh, it's up to you when to decide when you need to use a header, but sometimes you can, uh, you can't really bold a header, but the tutorial tells us we can italicize certain words. So let's try and do that here. So here we have to make the first line header uh, we have the first line a heading level four and then we have to italicize the book so level four and then in 100 years of solitude we can use the underscores to make the talic and that's all there is to making headers Again, it's quite useful. Some people also use R Markdown for writing papers. So then you can use those headers to structure your paper. So we're moving quite quickly. 
but we're moving on to the next lesson. Hyperlinks. So this is something which you might use in your assignment, but still could be quite, uh, quite useful. So there are two different links types in Markdown. You can have an inline link and you can have a different type of link, which I presume they will tell us about next. So we can, we have to see what the structure looks like. And so in this case, we're asked to make a link referring to google.com. So we can use the square brackets and then we type www.google.com. Yeah, that's all there really is to it. So we can add emphasis to the link text so we can make some things really, really bold. And so we are asked to make the really, really bold. So let's see if I can move the mouse over here. really really bold and then they want us to link the entire sentence to dailykitchen.com so we again use the square brackets there's some minor lag on my mouse so please bear with me So that's done the trick. So we can also even use uh, links within headings. So in this case, we are asked to make a level four heading. Just click here again so you can see my face. Well, no, when I click here, it goes back away. But let's just make a level four heading. We want the BBC to be linked to that link. And rather than typing it, I'll just copy and paste it. So copy, paste. Okay, so that's all the rest of uh, writing inline links. Oh, and here they tell us about the second type of links. So we had inline links, but now we have reference links. And as the name implies, this link is actually a reference to another place in the document. This could be useful, for example, when you're making larger documents. Again, this is not something you might use for your assignment, but it could still be handy. So we uh, can see that there's a link to another place. And then finally, another place links at the end to the actual site. So this might be useful for longer documents, perhaps where you want to uh, uh, keep all the references at the end of your document. So we want to have the first thing ring to a fun place and it has to link to zombo.com and the second link we have to link to another fun place. So what we do here is we type a fun place and then just like the uh, Example, I'm going to choose to copy it, move this further down. We're going to have a link to zombo.com. Now, they've already supplied us with the placeholder for the second link. And so this should link to stumble upon. And rather than me making typos, I'll just copy it here. Okay, we've finished this lesson as well. So this is how you make hyperlinks and how you link to things in uh, Markdown. Let's move on to the next le le lesson. What's the next lesson about? So images. And I think that's roughly where I'll stop. Like there's some other things I'm making 
I know I might just do a little more like but let's have first have a look at images so images also have two styles just like links and you can have like inline image links and then I presume reference image links so in the we need to make this link to a pretty tiger so we just type a pretty tiger for the old text so that's just also if people can't see the image they'll still have some uh, some text and if we put the uh, exclamation point in front we get to see the image of the actual tiger so we don't have to have this old text but for example if people are using screen readers or they're visually impaired this will be useful so again markdown is a very common way in which uh, people also build websites and so in that case it is quite important that you put in uh, these alternative tags now in the next example we uh, we make reference uh, uh, links so we can have like the founding father and then father and father at the end links this way and so here we're doing asked to do the same with like a black hat image tag so that's the uh we put this and then the first reference task we should call black and they've already put the placeholder in so it renders now for the second one we also put an exclamation mark and now we still have to build the reference link so i'm just going to be lazy and copy this and this is the image it has to link to and rather than typing a very long link i'm just going to copy it sure it's doing it correctly and there we go a black cat and orange cat so we've learned everything about images now let's move on to the, to the next one and this is about block quotes so this is something which you likely will not use for your assignment but again markdown is a generic language which you could also use to uh, build websites for example so it might still be useful to learn a little bit about this so if you're building your own website and you ever need to use a block quote this is how you do it so to create a block point all you have to do is use the carrot uh, 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 symbol and so in the box below we have to turn the book quotation into a block quote and this should do it so you can also have a character a carrot character on each line of the quote this is particularly useful if you have something spanning multiple paragraphs so as in this example so notes that even blank lines must contain the carrot character so this ensures that the entire block quote is grouped together so in the box below make the entire qu uh, quotation of block quotes by inserting a character on each line so this is one line so presumably i don't have to put a char character there put one here put another one here put one here put one here and then probably i should use the space as well and tremendous so what you should also know is that the block quotes can contain other uh, uh, other markdown elements so we can make things uh, italic or bold and we can also apply them to images of links as we had before so if in this example we have to make the French text italic without the uh, exclamation mark so let's have a look at Vive le Londres, which is I presume the only French text in there. Yeah, so we have to make that italic. You remember that we did that via underscores. We're asked not to use the exclamation mark, and then we have to turn everything into block quote. We don't see any spaces, so normally just the char character should do it. Uh, you can add a space as well if you want to. Apparently, it's not sensitive to that. And so we've learned all there is to know about our block quotes. So let's move on to the next lesson. I think that's lists. And I think that's sort of where I'll stop. So lists could be useful. Uh, you might need them in some cases when you structure your results. 
but uh, most likely you'll be uh, using these type of bullet point lists, but we also will learn a little bit about uh, ordered lists like numbered lists. So in this case, we have to make a list like the example. Let's remove the commas and turn this into a list. And luckily my browser already does this. So hopefully this will do it. Did I do something wrong? Let's have a look. There's a space, there's a space. So it is quite sensitive to spaces. So I had to remove those spaces in order to get it to move along. So that's an unordered list. Now we can make ordered lists. Ordered lists use numbers instead of these asterisks. So it should be relatively straightforward. So let's have a look. So we have to turn that into an ordered list. Let's put one. We're going to remove that. The comma. We're going to do slice of tomatoes. And luckily, because my browser does automated lists, we don't need this in flower. So this will have done it. And so it's turned this into a list and it's allowed us to move on. You can again use different elements and we can uh, have a list. We can have a list which has italics or bold or whatever we want in it. And in this case, we have to turn the Latin names of the plants into italics. So the things within the brackets are the Latin names. So there we go. And occasionally we'll have to make li lists with more than one uh, uh, order, so to speak. So nested uh, lists where one is within the other. So in this example, it's from uh, from Tintin, from my home country, from Belgium. So they have Tintin and Haddock, and you can see there's a space in between uh, then the preceding item, and that will structure the list. So it will be rendered like this. So in this case, I have to do it for Calculus and Castafiore. So this, we have to move it one space, remove some spaces, and then we have cast puree. Yeah, that will have done the trick. And now finally, we're asked to, uh, you can usually stop it after three levels. There's one more trick which we can explore and we can have something combined with additional context or additional levels. So you, your thing could look a little bit like this. Again, it mixes elements like it has italic, it has paragraphs. And so to create this sort of text, you do something like this. Again, underscore, and you can see the correct symbol for the uh, paragraph. And the first two items have a single space. And it, you might want to indent properly, so in order to make them match up. So you can read a little bit more. Now, we've been asked to convert the bullet points into their own paragraphs. Let's have a look. So that should be it. Better admit it. So let's have a Look, do we need another space of some sort? Short here because I think I've got the correct solution, but it doesn't allow me to move forward, so I could press skip. So I'm gonna look a little bit further into this. There might be some hidden uh, spaces here, or I might just, just uh, it might just not be working. Or either way, this is of uh, lesser importance to you. I'll let you know in a future video if I have any solution to this. 
but for now don't worry too much about this if we are able to work through just making generic lists making bold and italic then that's already great so that's it for now and a happy markdowning so you are now able to use markdown to build your own website hooray